Are you prepared to be overwhelmed with cuteness? Because I know I am. Hello everybody, Nikki Marr here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you have all had a fabulous week and are ready for another magical ranking video. Now, it's actually been a while since I've seen you because I did do a lot of pre-recording content before I went on my Disney trip, but I also have a full mini vlog of the trip, which I will link for you in case you'd like to experience what it's like to go to Disney with me. If this is your first time seeing me, hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Nikki Marr and I am a professional Disney adult. I started my online presence over on TikTok, but have moved over to YouTube and I'm so excited to be making content for all of you guys. If you love all things Disney, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And as you saw by the title of today's video, we are ranking Disney pets. Now it is no secret that Disney has some incredible characters in their canon, and some of them just happen to be very faithful pets to some of our favorite Disney characters. And so we are going to be going through all of the adorable pets that Disney has given us over the years, and we're going to rank them from worst to best. If you are excited for today's ranking, make sure to like down below and leave me a comment as to who you hope ends up at the top of my list. As always in my videos, we're going to start off with some disclaimers and then some conditions as to which characters are going to make the list today. If you guys would like to jump right into the ranking, then you can jump right to this timestamp. But for those of you who want to hear exactly which Disney characters are going to be making it on today's list, then strap in. First and foremost for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company and none of my opinions reflect those of the company. That being said, everything in this video is just my opinion and I welcome and celebrate all opinions on this channel. So if I happen to rank a character that you really, really like super low, make sure to leave me a comment down below and tell me why you gravitate towards that character so much. And as for the conditions for today's list, the character that I'm going to be ranking on today's list are considered pets. They must be a Disney pet character created by the Walt Disney Company. This does mean that we will not be including characters created by outside companies such as Pixar, 20th Century Fox, or Lucasfilms. And here's the big one. These characters are not Disney sidekicks, but Disney pets. This is important to distinguish because not all animal characters are necessarily pets. Just as an example for pets versus sidekicks, Princess Ariel from The Little Mermaid is friends with Flounder. They hang out together, they talk, they chat, and they have fun. Flounder is not necessarily Ariel's pet. However, Max is the pet of Prince Eric. Prince Eric serves as the owner and caretaker for Max in the movie. So again, if you are expecting to see a certain character and it doesn't end up on this list, that just might mean that I'm reserving them for the Disney Sidekicks video, which is coming soon. But if an animal character doesn't make it on today's list, make sure to leave them down below so that way I know that you want to see them ranked in the Sidekick video. And the final condition for today's list is that it can be any kind of animal. This includes dogs and cats and snakes and horses and birds and any animal that you can possibly imagine. Imagine. Mythical, real, talking, non-talking, as long as they are a pet of a Disney character, they belong on today's list. And because there are so many Disney pets, I am limiting today's list to 50 Disney pet characters. <sighs> And with all of that out of the way, I think we are ready to start ranking some Disney pets. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's talk about some adorable Disney pets. We are starting off today in the F tier. These are the pets that I don't really think make a huge impact in their movie. They're not necessarily bad characters, they might just not have a lot of screen time. This doesn't mean that I dislike the character, it just means that they either don't have a big impression or their impression in the movie is just not my favorite. Starting off all the way down at the bottom at number 50, is Iago from Aladdin. Now, Iago is not necessarily one of my favorite Disney pets, mainly because I find him a little annoying. He is the pet bird of Jafar, and he is relatively helpful to Jafar overall, but the reason that he ranks so low is that I really don't think he's that cute of a character. He's more so a menace to all of the hero characters in the movie, and he hasn't had a super big park presence. Really, the only place we've seen him is the Tiki Room under new management, which was a retheme of the Tiki Room which was not positively received. So he's gonna stay down at number 50 on my list today. At number 49 is Copper from The Fox and the Hound. Now I don't dislike Copper at all, I just find it difficult to watch this character go through what he goes through. The role that Copper plays in his movie is that he's sort of forced to turn on his friend Todd. You can very much tell that the character struggles with it, I just find it really difficult to watch. Copper is the dog of Amos Slade. He serves as one of the two main characters in the movie, and I think he's pretty cute. I just think there are a lot of other stronger Disney pets. And with that, we're gonna move on to number 48 on my list, 
who is Little Brother from Mulan. Now, I think Little Brother is absolutely adorable. We just barely see him in his movie. He is a non-speaking dog character who belongs to the character Mulan and the Fa family in general. And we really only see him run by in like two or three scenes. Again, absolutely adorable. It's just... There's not a lot of material to work with here. <laughs> Moving on to number 47 on my list is the Nock from Frozen 2, also known as Elsa's water spirit horse. Now I think the Nock is absolutely beautiful. It is a non-speaking spirit-esque horse character, which Elsa must fight in order to appease and bring onto her side. And I really don't have anything bad to say about this character other than Elsa literally has to fight and defeat it in order to peacefully coexist with it. But at the end, it is very beautiful and she's able to use her ice powers to allow it to come on land, which I think is very, very cool. At number 46 on my list is Citron? Citrion? I'm not sure which way it's said, but regardless, it is Hans's horse from the movie Frozen. Again, not a lot of screen time, but I think it's just an adorable horse that has some cute facial expressions. And while belonging to Prince Hans of the Southern Isles, this character isn't necessarily evil. He's sort of just a neutral horse character. At number 45 on my list is Gus from Cinderella, otherwise known as Octavius, but for short, we'll call you Gus. Gus is a very sweet mouse character, and while it's arguable that he's a sidekick, I really think that Cinderella sort of takes them under her wing, and she feeds them with the chicken feed and cares for them, making them clothes, so I think it's relatively safe to say that he's a pet. And while I think he is quite adorable, he's just not one of my favorites. Considering I find myself losing a little bit of attention on Cinderella whenever him and the other mice are on screen, I really prefer to watch the main characters in this movie, and that's why he ranks kind of low. But the final character in our F tier today comes in at number 44, Dinah from Alice in Wonderland. Now, Dinah, once again, is a very cute kitten character who is non-speaking. She belongs to the character of Alice, and the only reason she ends up in F tier is we don't really see her. She really is only in the very beginning and the very end of her movie, as she does not travel to Wonderland with Alice. Again, absolutely adorable. I just wish we saw more of her. But with that, we will move on to the D tier, which are characters that leave a little bit more impression than F tier. Again, not bad characters by any means. There are just a lot of iconic Disney pet characters that we have to reserve for the upper tiers. Coming in at number 43 is Archimedes, from the Sword in the Stone. Now, Archimedes is a strict and punctual owl belonging to Merlin. He's a fun character overall. He can just be kind of a stickler sometimes, which is why he makes it down in the D tier. Coming in at number 42 is Jacques from Cinderella. Now, I do like Jacques a little bit more than Gus, which is why he ranks above him. But again, he falls into the same situation as Gus, which is I just prefer to watch the human characters like Cinderella and the Tremaine family and the prince. And with that, we move on to number 41, who is Samson from Sleeping Beauty. Of course, the noble and trusty horse of Prince Philip. Samson is non-speaking. However, I do rank him above every other character on this list so far because he is a part of one of my favorite scenes in the movie, which is the final battle against Maleficent. He, of course, helps Prince Philip rush into battle and save the day. And for making it up to 41, I think he deserves a bucket of oats. And some nice carrots. <laughs> Moving on to number 40 on my list is Philippe from Beauty and the Beast. Philippe is the horse of Maurice and Belle. He serves as the mode of transportation for Maurice and Belle to both make it to the Beast's castle. And he's also the much more forward thinking trip planner as opposed to Maurice, who for some reason wants to go down a deep dark path that looks like impending doom. So it is the fact that he is a better decision maker than some of the human characters in this movie that ranks him at number 40. <laughs> Moving on to number 39 on my list is Percy from Pocahontas. Percy starts off as the pet of Governor Ratcliffe. However, once Governor Ratcliffe is brought back to England at the end of the movie, he stays behind with the Powhatan tribe and becomes a strong friend to Miko. Percy is prim and posh. However, it is being brought to the new world that puts him in a lot of shenanigans and creates a lot of chaos between him and Nico. Moving on to number 38 on my list, who is Khan from Mulan. Khan is the horse of the Fa family, presumed to belong to Fa Zhou, the father of Mulan. However, she ends up taking Khan into battle when she takes her father's place. Khan is a wonderful support system to Mulan, and while he doesn't speak in the movie, he does rush in to save her life in the snowstorm. He is a fun, spunky horse with a lot of attitude, and we gotta love him for it. And moving on to number 37 on my list, I know this character is not going to be memorable, but my gosh, is this one of the best jokes in the entire movie. And number 37 is Achilles from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, you might be thinking, who? This is not a memorable character. Correct. 
This is a personal choice to put him on this list because I think he is a part of one of the funniest jokes in the entire movie. Achilles is the non-speaking horse of Phoebus, and while I'm gonna be completely honest, he doesn't leave a lasting impression at all, I can't help but absolutely cackle at one moment in this movie every single time. As Phoebus and Achilles are strolling down the streets of Paris, Phoebus will occasionally give Achilles a command, such as Achilles sit. And at one moment, he delivers a command that I can't help but laugh at every single moment, which is Achilles, heal. <laughs> It can't just be me. That gets me every single time. And yes, this horse ranks above all of the other characters so far because of this one line. But I also think adding this joke into the movie also increases the comedy level of the character of Phoebus because it's almost like he named his horse so that way he could just say Achilles heel. Phoebus is a funny character in general, and while he may not have been the one to give Achilles his name, I like to imagine that he is because it just adds a whole other level onto Phoebus's comedy. Moving on to number 36 on my list is Mittens from Bolt. Now, Mittens is an absolutely adorable kitten, and she is a kitten scorned. At the beginning of her movie, she does not have an owner and prefers not to. However, after her travels with Rhino and Bolt, she becomes a very loving member of Penny's family, and it's so heartwarming to see her come around and actually want to be a part of a family again. Moving on up to number 35 on my list is Berlioz from the Aristocats. Now Berlioz is absolutely adorable and while quiet he is quite mischievous. He enjoys playing the piano which of course is absolutely adorable to watch a little kitten play the piano and he is the youngest of Duchess's three little kittens. And with that being said we're moving on up to number 34 on my list to lose from the Aristocats. <laughs> Toulouse is the final member of the D tier, but I think he's just an absolutely adorable brother to Berlioz. And seeing them together with their sister Marie just makes for an absolutely adorable dynamic. And so yeah, Toulouse rounds out our D tier today. And with that, we move on up to the C tier, which are the characters that fall very middle of the road for me. These characters often have a relatively stable presence in their movie, although perhaps not some of the most iconic moments, and start to give us a little bit more personality. It is quite rare to see any of these characters on any merchandise in the parks, or for that matter, having any sort of park presence. And with that being said, we're going to start off the C tier with number 33, who is Todd from The Fox and the Hound. Now, Todd serves as the main character in his movie. He is a speaking fox character, and I like him quite a bit more than Copper because he really serves as a strong protagonist character and sort of never falters towards the side of evil. He consistently remains a very strong friend. And while he is a wild fox, he is brought up by Widow Tweed as a sort of fox pet. And while he starts the movie off as a wild fox, he is brought up by Widow Tweed, who adopts him and takes him in when he is young and vulnerable. And she's just such a sweet character, always looking after him. Oh, the scene where she drops him off into the wild is oh, so heartbreaking. Oh. But with that, we'll move on to number 32 on my list who is Bruno from Cinderella. Now, Bruno is a non-speaking character from Cinderella, unlike Jacques and Gus. However, he ranks higher for me because he is the reason that Cinderella breaks free from her stepmother in the end. Lucifer is hiding this key, which is keeping Cinderella captive, and her mice friends are trying to get this key to her so she can go down to fit the slipper. And eventually, it's Bruno that comes and scares Lucifer away and saves the day. Sort of an unsung hero in this movie who I don't think gets nearly enough credit. And with that, we will move on up to number 30 one on my list, who is Cree Key from Mulan. And while yes, it is arguable that Cree Key could also be a sidekick to Mulan, I consider him much more a pet considering he is a gift from her grandmother to Mulan. Now, Cree Key is a cricket character who is non-speaking, who serves as a symbol of luck for Fa Mulan. Again, he is a gift from grandmother Fa to Mulan on the day she is set to go to the matchmaker. And again, Cree Key being a symbol of luck and Mulan often being in moments of unluckiness, it puts him in a lot of really funny situations. And it's just really enjoyable to watch him and Mushu banter. And with that, we move on up to number 30 on my list, who is Cleo from Pinocchio. Now let me tell you, this fish is pretty enough to walk a runway. That's maybe not a sentence I ever thought I'd say on the internet, but here we are. <laughs> that being said, Cleo is absolutely adorable. She is a non-speaking fish character who belongs to Geppetto, and it's really funny to see her in her fishbowl go along with all of the other characters on their journey, ending up in the belly of Monstro and then eventually escaping with all of them, and all the while staying in her fishbowl and very much alive. <laughs> and with that, we'll move on to number 29 on my list, who is Juju the snake from The Princess and the Frog. Now, fun fact about me, 
I am deathly afraid of snakes. Like, absolutely cannot stand them, hate them, I can't even like think about them. But this one somehow has won my heart over. I think Juju is absolutely adorable. Of course, being the snake of Mama Odie, and so being owned by the blind voodoo lady of the bayou, he's bound to get into some trouble. Juju is put into a lot of really funny situations, being turned into other animals, but also used as furniture and other objects for Mama Odie. So dare I say, this is the one snake that I can actually get around and no surprise that it's created by Disney. <laughs> and with that, we'll move on to number 28 on my list, who is Lucifer from Cinderella. What, there are villain pets on this list too? Oh yes, and there are more to come. <laughs> now, Lucifer is the pet of Lady Tremaine. He is a non-speaking cat character, and he serves as quite a bit of trouble for Jacques and Gus. But what's interesting about Lucifer is he also impacts the plot, being the character that sort of separates Cinderella from her destiny as he holds the key. I think this cat is so wonderfully drawn and just has such great sassy energy. I think he more than deserves the spot on this list. And with that, not straying too far from the cat family at number 27, is Figaro from Pinocchio. Now Figaro is very interesting because he's not only the cat of Geppetto, but in some later Disney cartoons, he's also the cat of Minnie Mouse. Not quite sure how that happened, but regardless, it is quite adorable. It's nice to know that Figaro makes his way around and graces many Disney homes with his presence. That being said, he is just a clumsy little adorable ball of cuteness and we can't help but absolutely love him when we watch Pinocchio. And with that, we have reached number 26 on my list and the final member of the C tier, Tuk Tuk from Riot and the Last Dragon. Now, Tuk Tuk is so cute. As a pit bull pug and armadillo hybrid, we see him when he is very, very little, and then later, a really, really big creature which Riot is able to ride around on. And it's just so cute to know that they have lived a full life together. He is non-speaking, but serves as Riot's primary mode of transportation. And while the band of misfits ends up traveling in other ways, such as on a boat, Tuk Tuk is always there and along for the ride, and he is just absolutely adorable. And with that, we have reached the B tier. These are are the marketable characters. These are the ones that people know and love. They are much more recognizable. And while not definitely the top tier characters, they are super cute and more than deserve the recognition for being so. At number 25 on my list, the halfway point of today's list is Max from The Little Mermaid. Now Max is this big fluffy dog, of course, belonging to Prince Eric. He is non-speaking and he is also the first character on this list to be a meet and greet character. Yes, over in Tokyo Disney Sea, you can meet Max alongside Prince Eric, and he is so cute. It is one of my dreams to go over to Tokyo Disney and to give Max the biggest hug. And am I maybe a little biased for him being from my favorite Disney film? Perhaps, but you know what? I love him and I think he belongs perfectly at number 25 on my list. At number 24 is Thomas O'Malley, the alley cat from the Aristocats. Now I love Thomas O'Malley starting off as sort of this rugged, rough around the edges sort of cat, and then slowly but surely making his way into Duchess and her kittens' lives to become a wonderfully rounded out adopted father for Marie, Toulouse, and Berlioz. He is so cute, has a wonderful arc, and he more than deserves to make it into the B tier on today's list. Once again, not straying too far from the cat realm is number 23, Duchess from the Aristocats. Now I love Duchess. She is so prim and pure. She makes it really easy to understand why Thomas wants to be in these kittens' lives so much. She is a wonderful mother figure and she always has her kittens' best interests in mind. I absolutely love them as a pair, but alone they are also quite strong characters. And speaking of iconic duos, at number 22 is Flotsam and Jetsam from The Little Mermaid. To be completely honest, they're the same. <laughs> the only difference is each one of them has a glowing yellow eye. However, for Flotsam, it is the left eye, and for Jetsam, it is the right eye. Both of them have the same voice actress, and they both serve as the pets, or should I say, poor little poopsies of Ursula the Sea Witch. What I love so much about these two is that they really are the first minions of a Disney villain to really succeed in their endeavor. They're able to flip the boat and prevent the kiss, and they also are really successful at spying on Ariel of course, through their magical eyes. If we saw them out in the wild, I would of course say watch out for those slippery eels, but because they are Disney characters, I gotta give them the credit where credit's due for being some great and creepy characters. And with that, we'll move on to number 21. And 
with that, we'll move on to number 20 on my list, who is Jolly from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, Jolly is the adorable goat pet of Esmeralda. He is non-speaking and actually, fun fact, he was not first a creation of Disney. He actually does appear in Victor Hugo's original novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I guess Victor Hugo also had a soft place in his heart for animal sidekicks. But Jolly is absolutely adorable. He is wonderfully protective over Esmeralda and he is an adorable character with a lot of spunk and a lot of attitude. Not straying too far from the path of goats, we are moving on to number 19 on my list, who is Valentino from Wish. Now Valentino is absolutely adorable. He has some really fantastically funny lines. He gets into a lot of trouble and it is just so cute to see him and Star interacting in this movie. I also love that he seems to be a very integral part of Asha's entire family and not just hers alone. And it makes it all the more funny when he finally is given the ability to speak. Moving on up to number 18 on my list is the Tramp from Lady and the Tramp. Now I like Tramp quite a bit. I think he is a really awesome character. Being the canine equivalent of a con artist at the beginning of his movie, he is forced to live a life where he is constantly lying and weaving in and out of people's lives in order to survive. He's always avoiding the dog catcher and always trying to survive off of the food of different homes and restaurants around the city. That being said, as he goes about his story and hangs out with Lady more and more and sees what her life is like, he does end up changing his mind and wanting to become a part of a real family. He is absolutely adorable and I love the tramp quite a bit. He's a tramp, but I love him. And that being said, he has a great song about him. <laughs> and with that, we move on to number 17 on my list, the final member of our B tier today, who is Raja from Aladdin. Now, Raja is the pet of Princess Jasmine. Yes, the princesses that came before her had lovely pets such as dogs and mice and bunnies and fish, but Jasmine, no, 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 she's iconic enough to have a tiger as a pet. And Raja is absolutely adorable. He has the sweetest eyes. He helps Jasmine escape the palace, which she's been longing to do her entire life. He springs into action against Jafar, and he even very briefly becomes a hidden Mickey in his movie, when Genie transforms him. While he doesn't speak in his movie, Raja makes quite a lasting impression, and he is just the sweetest, not so little feline. <laughs> and with that, we are moving on up to the A tier. These are characters that I absolutely love. They have a very strong presence in their movie, often very heavily influencing and changing the plot, and they are all quite marketable. Starting off the A tier with number 16 is Perdita from 101 Dalmatians. Now I have nothing but good things to say about Perdita. She is such a wonderful mother to her Dalmatian puppies and also to her adopted Dalmatian puppies. She will stop at absolutely nothing to get these puppies home and safe from the clutches of Cruella de Vil. Traveling in the snow and the ice cold to make sure that they make it home and safe. And you may notice a running theme on my list as we move on to number 15 on my list, who is Pongo, once again from 101 Dalmatians. Now, do me a favor, copy and paste everything that I've said about Perdita into Pongo's section. However, we're gonna add one more thing, which is he is the reason for the plot of the story, as he is the character that brings Roger and Anita together. These two canines are neck and neck, but considering that Pongo is the one who brings the family together, We'll give him a little bit more credit in this movie. <laughs> but regardless, these two are absolutely adorable, fiercely protective over their puppies, and I think they are really great dog parents. And with that, we'll move on up to number 14 on my list, who is Pua from Moana. Hang on, I have a little friend that wants to join us. Oh, look who it, look who it is! I have a Pua of my own, and I had to bring him up for this little video. Pua is absolutely adorable. Arguably one of the cutest Disney characters I've ever seen in my life. Who is the pig of Moana, and while I think he's adorable and I place him really high up on this list, he really doesn't have a lot of screen time, considering he's really only at the very beginning and the very end of his movie. Who is not one of the characters that travels with Moana on her big adventure. However, I place him high up on this list because I just can't get over how stinking cute this character is. Thank you for your time, little guy. I'm gonna put you back on the shelf now. <laughs> All right, and with that, we'll move on to number 13 on my list, who is Hey Hey, also from Moana. Now, I love this character so much because when they were creating the movie Moana, the creative team sat down and said, let's create a character that is dumber than dumb. And who did we get? 
Hey, hey, the lovable little rooster who has no thoughts going on behind those eyes. In fact, probably negative thoughts happening behind those eyes. But for where he lacks in smarts, he more than makes up for in absolute adorableness. He is so cute and actually is quite helpful to Moana a few times in the movie, saving the heart of Tefiti from falling in the water during the final battle. The only thing we gotta worry about with this one is that he doesn't become Maui's boat snack. <laughs> now moving on to number 12, I have saved a position for a character who gets close to no love whatsoever. However, I absolutely love this character and I need to give her her recognition. And number 12 is Henwen from The Black Cauldron. Now, for those of you who don't know, Henwen is an adorable little piggy character who can predict the future. She is the pet piggy of Taran and Dalbin. She is a non-speaking character, however, one of the only Disney pets to have magical abilities. Henwen is also the driving force for the movie as she is the character that the Horned King wants to control in order to understand what is going to happen with the Black Cauldron. She is so adorable and mixed with the fact that she has magical abilities, I can't help but reserve a place for her in the A tier. Moving on to number 11 on my list is Bolt from Bolt. With this movie came a very fun plotline where Bolt thinks he really is a super dog. However, he's simply a dog on a movie set who is pretty much not exposed to the outside world. So when he goes into the outside world and slowly but surely realizes that there is really nothing special about him, he wonders if he truly is a meaningful part of Penny's life. And eventually by traveling across the country and getting back home to Penny, he finds out the answer to that question. Bolt is so cute, and if you haven't seen this movie, I highly, highly recommend. So that way you can witness one of Disney's most adorable pets. Although we are still in the A tier, we have reached the top 10 on my list today. Are you nervous? Is your favorite pet gonna make the top 10? At number 10 on my list, we are venturing back to the land of the villains. At number 10 is Diablo from Sleeping Beauty. Now Diablo is the pet raven of Maleficent. And as a side note, if you'd like to know my thoughts on Maleficent, I'm gonna link my rank every Disney villains video up above. And while Diablo is a pet raven who does not speak, he does have quite a big impact on his movie. As for 16 years, Maleficent is on the search for Princess Aurora, and Maleficent places her trust in being able to accomplish this goal into her goons. Now, her goons, not being the smartest Disney characters, spend the entirety of that 16 years searching for a baby. Great. <laughs> However, in a little less than a few days, Diablo is able to circle a kingdom and find Briar Rose hidden in the woods. And while Diablo is unfortunately turned to stone at the very end of the movie by Merriweather, I think he more than deserves a place on this list. For once again, being a very successful villain henchman. With that, we'll move on to number nine on my list, who is Bruni from Frozen 2, otherwise known as the Salamander Fire Spirit. Now, Bruni is arguably Elsa's closest confidant as she has little conversations with him and he is always right by her side. He is again, another character that Elsa has to defeat in order to bring to her side. But this character is so cute. Again, another character with magical abilities, much like the Nock and Henwen. And for his character design alone, Bruni more than deserves to be in the top 10 of this video. And at number eight, the final member of the A tier today is Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Now, yes, while being a very prevalent character in his movie, Stitch is considered to be Lilo's pet. And he is the strangest looking dog him and Nani have ever seen. <laughs> Experiment 626 is arguably one of the most iconic Disney characters, being highly marketed across all the parks. He used to have his own ride, Stitch's Great Escape, and he is a beloved character by so many. He's so cute as he dresses up as Elvis, as well as learning about family and Ohana and how no one gets left behind. It is such a touching story and the fact that Lilo and Nani welcome Stitch and Alien from a faraway galaxy into their home is so beautiful and so sweet and I am so happy to include him in my top 10 today. But with that, we have reached the S tier. These are my favorite Disney pets of all time. These characters are highly marketable. They can quite often be seen in Disney parks, although not all of them, and they can win my heart every single time. At number seven on my list, is Sven from Frozen. A reindeer, one we haven't seen yet on this list of 50 characters. <laughs> Sven is so 
cute. He was an instant favorite when Frozen came out. He is strong and loyal and such a wonderful pet reindeer to Kristoff. While he's not speaking, Kristoff often does help him speak by speaking for him. And he just is just such a lovable, lovable little character. He more than deserves an S tier, let's be completely honest. If there's anybody that says that Sven doesn't deserve S tier, they don't have a heart. <laughs> and with that, we'll move on to number six on my list, who is probably Disney's most iconic pet of all times, Pluto. Now, while Pluto doesn't necessarily come from a movie, but rather a lot of Mickey shorts, Pluto is undeniably the most iconic Disney dog. He is in the Fab Five. He can be met at every single Disney park, and he is just such a loyal and trusting friend to Mickey Mouse. Let's just be honest, how could Mickey's own pet not be in the S tier? Come on! But with that, we'll move on to number five on my list, who is Nana from Peter Pan. Now, Nana is an instant favorite favorite of mine. She is the nurse to the darling children. How cute! She brings them their medicine every night and tucks them into bed. Oh my god. She is just the most lovable and adorable little canine you ever did see. And the only thing that makes her not rank higher is that the animators decided not to bring her to Neverland with the darling children. What a missed opportunity. Can you imagine the shenanigans that she would have gotten into in Neverland? I can just imagine her running into like the mermaids or the TikTok croc. Like what would that story have been like? But regardless, I love her so much. And even though she has very little screen time in her movie, she more than deserves top five. Top five on this list and in my heart, of course. <laughs> Moving on to number four on my list. Now I know that I quite often ranked Tangled things to be a little bit lower, but I think my Tangled fans are gonna be quite happy with me. At number four is Maximus. Now, while Maximus is a non-speaking horse, he is such a fierce and loyal friend to Flynn Rider and Rapunzel. And while some people may argue that he is a sidekick rather than a pet, I can't help but believe that he has such strong pet energy to Flynn Rider. And just like every other horse on this list, he is always there when needed. Except with this guy, he's a little bit more spunky and attitudinal, which we can't help but absolutely love. Moving on to number three on my list. Ooh, another horse character. Well, kind of. At number three, is Pegasus from Hercules. Yet another mythical pet on this list. Pegasus is of course half bird and half horse, and it is very funnily described to us by Zeus that he has the head and body of a horse and the brain of a bird. But my god, Pegasus is such a wonderful character. He has such a great personality for being a non-speaking character. He has great buddy-buddy moments with Hercules and funny moments with Meg because she doesn't like heights. He easily and zanily interacts with every single leading character in this movie and his interactions with them are absolutely unforgettable. Not to mention we see him as a baby and an adult and baby Pegasus. Oh, how can you not love this little horse? He is the sweetest soul and absolutely deserving of number three on my list. At number two, once again, for my Tangled fans, is Pascal from Tangled. Pascal, the adorable and lovable color-changing chameleon from Tangled, is an instant iconic Disney pet. I love this character so much. He is so cute and wonderful. Not to mention extremely marketable. There is a lot of Disney merch that features him. What's so cute about him is that he changes his color based on his personality or if he needs to hide into the background. He also assists Rapunzel and Flynn in Mother Gothel's demise. He stretches out Rapunzel's hair, which Mother Gothel trips over. So even though he seems to be a little helpless pet, he becomes one of the vital characters at the very end of the movie. There is no way that you cannot absolutely fall in love with Pascal when watching this movie. He is so wonderful and adorable and more than deserving of number two on today's list. But we've reached number one. Are you guys nervous? I certainly am, but I am very confident in my answer today. At number one on my list of favorite Disney pets is Lady from Lady and the Tramp. Now, this character is so unbelievably wonderful. I cannot speak enough praise to this character. She is not only a fiercely loyal pet to Jim Deer and Darling, but also an incredible protagonist for one of my favorite Disney films. If you guys wanna know where this film falls on my list of favorite Disney films, I will also link my favorite Disney animated movies video right up here. But this is easily one of my favorite Disney romance films. It takes us on a journey of Lady and the Tramp starting off 
off as very distant strangers and learning to love each other and balance each other out where they may not be as strong. And Lady really helps to introduce Tramp into what it's like to be a part of a family. While she is often left by the wayside by Jim Deere and Darling once they have their baby, Lady is also one of the most fiercest protectors of that baby, stopping at nothing to make sure that she can rescue that baby from the rat at the end of the movie. It is so unbelievably wonderful to watch Lady grow up in the household and also become a wonderfully strong female character. Lady does not get enough love, and if you haven't seen this movie in a while, I highly recommend to watch because, oh, she is just such a wonderful character, not even mentioning Pat. Again, I can't say enough good things. And with that, we have reached the end of my list of favorite Disney pets. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these wonderful Disney pets. If your favorite Disney pet ended up in a good place on this list, make sure to leave me a comment telling me about them down below. And if a character you were expecting to show up didn't show up, make sure to leave them down below too, because I might be including them in my Disney sidekicks video, which is coming up in the next few weeks. If you would like to find me on my other social medias. My handle is at Nikki Mara and you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me because at this point I am coming out with videos every single Friday at 5 p.m. And thank you so much for watching. It absolutely warms my heart when you guys leave me a little comment and we can have a fun little conversation down below. I love getting to connect with all of you over Disney movies and this channel is absolutely one of the best decisions I ever made. So with that, I hope you all have a magical rest of your week and until then, I'll see y'all real soon.